I am fighting a ragdoll rainbow unicorn called Herp the Derp while dual wielding swords like Kirito. This is gonna be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Strife Hayes. I've spent years playing the best MMO games available. Now it's time to do the opposite and find the worst of the worst. I'm gonna play them all so you don't have to. Join me on a journey through the most awful MMOs I can find. Drop a like on the vid and sub to the channel for more awful MMOs and ring the bell so you don't miss a single video. If you're enjoying the series so far and would like it to continue, please consider supporting through the Patreon like all these awesome people have. You'll find the link in the description below. Hello, today we are playing Adventure Quest 3D. Now Adventure Quest as a franchise has featured on this worst MMO series before with Adventure Quest Worlds, which is perhaps a more traditional Adventure Quest game. For those who never played, Adventure Quest was a 2D Flash-based adventure game. It was essentially an online single-player RPG. It did well enough that the company behind it, Artix Entertainment, went on to make Dragon Fable, then Mech Quest, then several more games they almost immediately forgot about. So let's get a few positives said right away, because I want to feel like I'm being fair to this game and this company before I start picking it apart. Flash is indeed dead, but you can still play these games. You just need to download the Artix launcher. It's free on their site and this will let you play all their stuff. And after my Adventure Quest World's worst MMO ever episode, I actually got a very long, very polite Twitter message from Alina, the community manager of Adventure Quest Worlds. She watched the video and took several of my points, mainly temporary items not being tracked and the lack of a mobile client, and said they were being looked at by the team, so it's nice to get some feedback. All of that positive stuff being said, if you do load up the Arctic's launcher, you can play Epic Duel, or Mech Quest, or Oversoul, or Idle Quest, or go to the website and play Bio Beasts, or Battle Gems, or Undead Assault, and what you'll start to notice is this company start a lot of projects and then never finish them. Seriously, they've got more unfinished projects than me. This is a design flaw we'll see creep back in later. So, Adventure Quest 3D. It's a free MMO on PC and mobile, and players share the same servers so you can all team up. It was released in 2016 and still claims to be in early access, despite being out for five years. It's got relatively positive overall reviews and is quite small, so let's download it and give it a go. My first thought is, why 3D? The charm of Adventure Quest and Dragon Fable and Adventure Quest Worlds was the 2D side-scrolling aesthetic. It was instantly recognisable. It was associated with them. You saw the graphical style, you knew this is an Adventure Quest game. Moving away from that toward 3D puts you at risk of becoming just another generic 3D MMO with no real identity. And I feel that's exactly what's happened. A game being 2D if it's been 2D forever, is an important part of its identity. Like how Sonic doesn't just mean a game with Sonic. It means a style of game, a 2D side-scrolling speed-based platformer. Making something 3D just loses the thing that gave it charm. So the game launches and you can see the tooltip hint, just saying, don't think about a pencil. This is Arctic's humour, all over, and most of it makes me chuckle. Adventure Quest was never a series that took itself seriously. It had in-jokes and meta-humour, and always felt like the playful friend who would create zany, wacky adventures for you to go on. Continuity be damned! And it was about the side adventures, never the main plot. Writing, especially dry humour and wit, is this game's strength, but as we'll see, it sometimes isn't enough. I played this game before, back when it launched, and I don't feel like deleting my tune, so I'll start a new guy with a new account. You've got three main starting classes to choose from, but they're all basically different styles of DPS, especially in the early game. I'll go with Rogue, and I'll play as a girl, because I feel like a change. The face customization is decent. I especially like how you can choose a female avatar and still have a beard or a twirly moustache. It's not a phase, Mum. This is who I really am. A character like this can only be known by the strongest of Mary Sue names, so let's begin the game with Ebony, Darkness, Dementia, Raven, and I couldn't fit the way on there because of the character limit. 
Tutorial, we are inside the realm of death. Why? Doesn't matter, just go with it. WASD movement, space to jump, rebinding keys works A-OK, -okay, but the music is looping. There is 20 seconds of repetitive background music and it gets old quickly. Get into our first fight. You've got your abilities shown on the bar below. With individual cooldown times, you gain more abilities as you level up your class. Now, the overall level of your character and the specific level of your class are separate because you can unlock multiple classes on one character, which is a system I like. Means you can switch your playstyle around and experience different things. Here's the first aspect I dislike. The tutorial given by darkening the screen and having a big floating hand points to what you need to click on. I hate this system because it doesn't explain why I'm doing this. It's just, okay, now here, and here, now this, and then this. And boom, you've done it. And I'm thinking, done what? I know it's equipping an item, but a newer player will not know why they've done this. Early combat is fine if a bit floaty. The slices and animations or flowing after effects of the abilities look nice, but there's no real feeling of impact in any of the hits. It feels very, very weak. We get to the first larger enemy and we get the first red damage indicator on the floor. Now I know, and you know, that the red area is bad, but ask yourself this, would a brand new player know? I mean, they'd learn very quickly, but a simple tooltip of stay out of the red would be nice. I do like how the red fills up though. The area is shown then filled smoothly. This looks lovely, but the animation of the enemy doesn't do anything to relate to this. They don't draw their weapon back. They don't get ready for a huge hit. It's just, oh, the area's full now, the damage happens. Have a chat to death and he's just full of puns, which I appreciate, but this does highlight how writing in this game works. It's always about setting up the next joke. It's always a bad pun. It's always light-hearted entertainment and dry witticisms. And it's good at those. But when it starts to try and be deep and brooding and serious, well, then it kind of falls down a bit. You're good at light hearted adventures artics. Don't try and be Game of Thrones. Also, they felt the need to animate a new camera angle with every single line, which means every time you click to advance the conversation, the camera just snaps between who's talking. Death tells us some guy called Vane has stolen his magical key, so we need to go and get it back. We start the journey by killing a door. Thrilling stuff. Fight Vane and we get completely slaughtered. We get smashed into the ground, kicked around, straight up stabbed through the stomach and then crushed by a rock. But because we are helping death, we cannot ever die. So with us being unkillable, Vane just yeets us into the distance far away from him, which works for him for the time being. This is also shown by a nice spinning across the sky cutscene. We land directly in the centre of a summoning circle. Several vain worshippers are trying to summon him to come forth and appear, and instead we land there. I love the irony of this. So we waste no time in killing the cultists and rescuing the local people. Rank up the rogue class a few times and get access to some new abilities. My main combat style is adding stacks of poison that turn into better poison, so my fights are slow but steady. There's a quest arrow to the top right, guiding me to Alric. I would show you the map, but oh, don't worry, we'll get to that. Talking to an NPC opens the quest box. Quest boxes are fine, they've been designed nicely, and they are chunky, so they work on mobile. This gives you all the information you need, and that's all I want. So we're off to rescue some villagers. While rescuing the villagers, I notice a really small but super jarring thing. Your cursor doesn't change, even if you're hovering over an object you can interact with. This is a simple computer design choice used everywhere, even out of games. Hovering over a hyperlink turns your cursor into a little hand. In any other MMO, when your cursor moves over an object you can interact with, whether it be a bag or a sword or a mouth, it'll turn into something to show you, yes, you can click this. Adventure Quest 3D doesn't do this. The objects still sparkle, but there's no cursor change, which is a really specific thing to miss. Now the blacksmith needs us to collect some healing pots, then sacks of grain. The gameplay so far is walk around and click on X amount of objects. Collect this all for him, then we go and kill five minions. The starting area has several nice visual effects. The castle in the distance, the enemies fighting the guards, but it feels way too open and kind of empty. There's important soldiers just standing on the field, not in a camp or protected by anyone. There's large open areas of nothing happening. If we're going for a chaotic battlefield, I feel they'd have done well to make this a lot smaller. We kill five minions, get five blades, then go back to the blacksmith and make a sword by interacting with the anvil, and this whole process just leaves me feeling 
underwhelmed. You see, to make the sword, you click on the anvil, check you've got the items needed, click make, and now you have the sword. But that's it. It's just clicking. There's no hammering animation, no sound of the hammer on anvil, no magical mystical congratulations you made a thing noise, no pop-up box to say you've done this, it's literally just click 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 done. There's no visual or audio feedback that I've done anything. We now need to investigate the gate to the castle, then the catapult, which literally means click on the big gear near the gate, then click on the catapult, then report to the commander. What information have we gathered? All we can say is there is a gate and there is a catapult. You can clearly see these things. And this makes the commander go, my God, now I know there's a gate and a catapult. We can shoot the gate with the catapult, which is then exactly what happens. The portcullis gets blown off and somehow falls directly into the ground, despite the fact portcullises can't do that. Then we ride in and Skarn, an evil dude who works for Vane, is after a dragon egg, which is apparently hidden in the castle somewhere. We explain the egg is incredibly well guarded and he'll never find it, then he leaves and we fight this big minion. This mini boss is basically just a mix of all the red area mechanics we've seen so far with more health. There's no environmental stuff, no different attacks, just a big HP bag. I'm also struggling to hear any unique sound effects, and the generic battle music that's been looping throughout just kind of carries on, even during this fight. The music is so overpowering, and the loop is so short, it just lays down a soft blanket of meh for the whole scene. Beat the mini boss, then find the incredibly well hidden dragon egg in a chest literally right next to the boss. I hope this was included ironically, although it's not mentioned, so I think it's just lazy design. We level up and get some free loot boxes, because even in a 3D mobile MMO mostly aimed at kids, there's always room for loot boxes. Get some cool cosmetic items, then discover a system I like. In your inventory, every item has an equip, or equip as cosmetic choice. So you can have the stats of one item and the looks of another, and it's super easy to do this. This is good. More games should make cosmetics this easy if you're gonna have them. Hand the egg back to the captain and leave to the main town of Battle On. I press M to open the map, and the actual world landmass is shaped like a dragon, which is super cool, very stylistic. I love small touches like this, but the map isn't actually a map. You can't zoom in or see where things are in relation to other things. It's more just a list of places, and when you click the places, you just get transported there, instantly, from anywhere. This is great for travel, and bad for a solid story. If you can travel to anywhere, from anywhere, then the act of being somewhere doesn't make the player feel accomplished. It's not, I travelled long and hard and my reward is being in this awesome place. It's just, boom, now you're there, have fun. Like here, I've managed to travel to Yulgar's Inn by accident, despite having never actually been to the town of Battleon yet, where the inn is. This instant travel is a very Arctic's thing to do. Then I travel here and discover this. I'm not even following the main story, I just found D. Piddy, the mostly naked. I chat to this NPC and discover he is a cosplayer who had his costume stolen by the Dreadfool, and I need to enter this labyrinth and get it back. It also includes the fantastic line of dialogue, I will kill you to death. Artix games are at their best when this kind of stuff happens. Playing an Artix game is like listening to kids making up stories. They're simple, and they're often silly, but they're always enjoyable. It's never about the complex relationships between countries. It's never about political intrigue. It's about a guy having his clothes stolen and you fighting through a circus-themed mad labyrinth to get them back. Artix games are basically a collection of one-shot zany adventures all held loosely together by recurring characters and similar gameplay, and they are brilliant at writing short stories. But bringing that system from 2D to 3D and trying to become a general MMO instead of a fun RPG has lost a lot of the charm. I'll come back here later, but for now, let's go to Battleon and do the main quest. I crank the graphics up as high as they will go and hand in the egg by talking to this guardian. Now, up to this point, the main quest has passed me from person to person, but it ends here with this guy's quests requiring you now to be a guardian. That's a paying premium player. You actually carry on the main quest by talking to someone else. It's kind of low to have me talk to an NPC as part of the main quest, who then branches off. He stops the flow of the game and says, hey, 
start paying. Becoming a Guardian will set you back $20, but this isn't the only quest the dude has. There's also PvP, so I try that and... Oh, no, PvP is also Guardian only. You must pay $20 to do the PvP quest, so I guess we won't be doing that. This cutscene plays, and I think this is a graphical bug. Half the screen just goes white. That, or there's something in the foreground covering this up. And now the main plot happens. To kill Vayne and get Death's Key, we'll need a legendary weapon. The legendary weapon is being held through this magical portal, but we need to activate the portal by turning on all the runes around the edge, and to activate a rune, you need to go to a map and complete all the quests on it. Simple enough. Stepping through the portal gives us a few options. We can choose to follow the main plot or click the random adventure button. This is peak Artix. If I had to describe Artix games in two words, this is it. Random adventure. They are world leaders in short, well-written, funny, charming, zany, magical, manacle, oddball, creative and downright wacky adventures. But this is not the kind of gameplay or adventure you can sustain over a long period of time. Short, intense, random adventures with memorable characters and odd locations work best in short doses, like Charlie the Unicorn, Llamas with Hats, Red vs Blue. Short but wacky events happening that are fun for a few minutes but don't have the legs or the depth to sustain a 100 hour epic journey. In the main city there is a quest board guiding me to Greenguard Forest. Annoyingly the quest log doesn't have an instant take me there now button, so I need to open the world map, and oh, the world map has several options for Green Guard. Not sure which one I need. So I take one at random and doesn't seem to be the right one. So I turn around and leave, but nope, invisible wall, you cannot seem to change maps by actually leaving a map. At least not this one anyway. I travel back to town via the travel interface, and here's the navigation issue. While there is a world map, there's no mini-map, and pressing M brings up the world map locations, but this isn't actually a map. It doesn't show me where I am in relation to the map I'm on or where I need to go to. I can't use this to navigate around, and I need to go to Green Guard, but my instant travel menu doesn't take me to the correct Green Guard. Eventually, I figure it out. You've got to walk through the main portal, click continue adventure and then it takes you to the right green guard so it's free form travel anywhere except the place you actually need to go for the first story quest seems overly complex and not that intuitive first quest here kill some sneevels which are an adventure quest staple enemy like frogzards and moglins sneevels love cardboard boxes and are basically less dumb goblins Oh, the next quest is to kill Frogzars, but I can accept it directly from the overlay menu. No need to go and talk to anyone. This system is becoming more common in MMO games, just giving a player a task with no relation as to why it has to happen or who in the world wants it to happen. Kill them and talk to Rabina Hood, another reoccurring character. She sets the quest of killing the Mega Frog Zard and offers to train me as a ranger. So here's how the other classes work. You can accept class quests or a big class quest once a day. Completing them earns you tokens that you then use to buy the class. Or you can buy the class for real money if you don't want to wait. Seeing as you can only accept one class quest a day and gain a limited amount of tokens, unlocking all the classes would take a few weeks, so I'll stick as a rogue for now. The Mega Frogzard isn't that mega and dies really fast. Now we need to go and activate three obelisks. How? You hold your hand up to them. Why? Because the forest is in danger. Why does it have to be us? It doesn't. We're just here and this is content. Stop overthinking or questioning. Just go and click three things. While crossing this secret bridge, I find a hidden boss. Not super well hidden, as the bridge is obvious and there's a board in the middle of the bridge, but still. Clicking it unlocks Brutal Corn, a brutal unicorn we must defeat in one-on-one -on -one combat. So we start fighting, and here is a perfect example of what Artics do well. The Click 3 Obelisks gameplay loop is dull and forgettable and repetitive and doesn't set you apart, but fighting a weightlifting bro unicorn on a bridge called Brutal Corn, this is memorable. This is uniquely Artics. This is the game's strength being random, and it's a shame the entire game isn't just made of bits like this. Adventure Quest writing is like the Katie Te Penguin of Doom holds up Spork copypasta translated into an RPG plot. It's stupid and silly, and it's the best thing about them. 
but the problem appears to be with the mechanical side. Beating Brutal Corn doesn't actually make anything happen. There's no visual flair, no sound cue, no item drop, just, okay, you're done now, carry on. And it ends so abruptly. This game is the master of building up energy in the writing and the setup and then just totally dropping the ball in the execution of the gameplay. Watch how this fight ends. Just over. No fanfare. Which is a shame for such a small but awesome bit of content. I do find a menu of daily rewards, so I accept some of these and get some gold, which is nice. Finish activating all the obelisks, and now we need to track down a hermit. The hermit lives in a cave, but because there's no minimap, I can't navigate my own way there, so I just have to follow the arrow. And in the cave is a mini boss who we fight, and the fights are just lackluster. I don't feel excited for this fight because it's just a bigger version of what I've been doing for the past 10 minutes. Now some people have said to me, but they're using a limited 3D engine, they're still new to the 3D world, gotta cut them some slack. And this is my issue. Artix were very good at making 2D games. They were the leaders of that craft and they were judged on that. Judged by their results and their results were good. Now they've stepped into the 3D world and people aren't judging them by 3D standards, which they have to be. Artix have chosen to make a 3D MMO. So where before they were the kings of the 2D realm, they are now competing with Warcraft, Rift, Terra, Neverwinter, Elder Scrolls, RuneScape. They're fighting with the big boys. And in that arena, they just don't hold up. If they stuck to 2D games or made Adventure Quest World better, they'd have cornered a very niche market. But this, 3D? This is just another okay MMO, nothing to write home about. I kill the boss, get the hermit's book, bring it back and then think, right, let's try one of those random adventures from the travel book. Let's play to their strengths. How about a random dungeon? This throws me into a very short, linear dungeon with one other person. They've arrived before me, so most of the enemies are dead. I catch up and get killing. We kill the final boss because the red area attacks are very limited in nature. And after the dungeon, I'm just put back in town and it says dungeon complete in the chat box to the bottom left. What an anti-climax, again. This game really, really does not know how to end an adventure and keep the energy. The writing is great at the beginning of a crazy, kooky caper, and it's enjoyable in the middle, but everything ends just so unceremoniously. It's just start, kill, loot, done. Another random adventure puts me in this ice castle. Now I'm strong enough to kill every enemy one on one, but I need to rest between each one making the progress slow. I'm joined by another player, so we take down the dragon together. On the surface, it's fun, but this is just really superficial gameplay. Oh, random fact, this game hosted an in-game concert by the band Breaking Benjamin. They played several songs and broadcast them to Adventure Quest 3D players. And while this seems like an odd thing to do, it definitely fits with the designer Adam Bond's personality perfectly. I am convinced he's just using the success of his games to do cool stuff he wanted to do as a kid. And fair play to him, it's his game, he can do what he likes with it. But doing stuff like this reminds people that it's a game and not a serious fictional world. Adventure Quest 3D is very much a light-hearted, lunch-break size MMO, not a lore-heavy deep dive, Warcraft size game. If you're after a small silly game to play in short bursts, it's perfect. Just don't go looking for any real depth. Does pressing P open the party menu or the profile? Nope, it's the potion shop, which you can buy from at any time. Super convenient, and again, a sign the game is less on the hardcore side of the scale. Back in town, visit Cicero, the weapons merchant, and you can buy a gun. Just a straight up gun. Yes, I want it. It's a thousand gold, and I don't have that right now. Okay, new target. I'm gonna grind for gold, then buy a gun. Rogue with a gun, gonna go full assassin build John Wick on this. I just blitz through quests for like an hour, collecting gold, and the more I play, the more I realize the translation to 3D has weakened the overall feel of Adventure Quest. Adventure Quest, Dragon Fable, and Mech Quest, their three largest games, and the strength of these games were in how unique they were. Almost no other online single player 2D RPGs like them existed. Yes, you had smaller independent games on sites like Newgrounds or Flash Games, but Artix Entertainment ran the show on this style of gameplay, and they did what they do the best. They used the game to tell a funny story. 
In Adventure Quest, you could drink a potion in the inn that shrank you and then fight through a mouse nest. In Dragon Fable, you could kill a giant floating eyeball that dropped an ocarina of time, which was an ocarina stuffed with the herb time. In Mech Quest, I met an enemy called Mecha Gaius Baltar, which is a reference to Battlestar Galactica. The Arctic's games were always story first, because the gameplay was simple. This, however, this right now, this is weak. Because in a 3D game, especially an MMO, the core gameplay loop needs to be solid and the story is set dressing. The core loop here is just kill X, click X, talk to X, repeat. Even the advert for this game shows a 3D Paladin Artix yelling, looking like a generic mobile game face. They've stepped into the serious MMO ring and that's just not what they're good at. Here's a strength. I have to pull out the sword in the stone, but it turns out it's actually a rock golem that got stabbed with a sword and ambushes me. A small, singular, self-contained event that references pop culture and subverts expectations. Or how about here, where I find the password for the Sneevil Box Fort by beating a Sneevil up. The password is box, so I go there and say box, but I don't get in because I am not a Sneevil. Small, silly touches that are funny individually, but they're only small throwaway jokes. 2D Artix games could get away with using humour and silly 2D animation because that was always the focus. Now they've moved into 3D, but not used any of the 3D design space to enhance the jokes. If anything, it just shows that they haven't thought about the 3D design space. No sound cues, no visual cues, no movement cues. They are missing a lot of potential comedy by relying on the writing alone. Fighting through this fort to the King Sneevil, we need to find a special forest gem, but he only has the box of the gem. Turns out he dumped the gem over the side because Sneevils just want the boxes, not the contents. So under the fort is a giant pile of gold and gems they just don't care about. This is a funny idea, a small entertaining adventure. This is a brilliant little side quest with interesting quirky characters. Unfortunately, it won't be relevant again for the main story. Because Artics move from one plot point to the next quickly. They write a joke and move on, write a joke and move on. This isn't how an MMO is built. The next quest, for example, is just to investigate three trees and then kill six enemies. They've gone from small, self-contained, decent jokes to generic MMO gameplay, which just highlights how bad they are at the MMO part. Finally, I gather up a thousand gold so I can go and buy a gun, which I can equip, but not see. What that is not fair. I can equip the item and get the stats, but the rogue class needs a melee cosmetic weapon equipped. I can't just pistol whip people. This is very disappointing. Carry on the main quest, spot the floating map down by the river's edge because we're Guild Wars 2 now, so I go and check it out and it unlocks a hidden title. So I check the title menu and oh, apparently killing brutal corn earlier also gave me one, so I use that. The forest we are in is corrupted, so I find the big evil tree boss and every single thing it says is a pun, which I appreciate but I feel the game design really should branch out and add boss mechanics, not simply boss jokes. And yes, branch out was an intended pun. I activate some magical pillars and travel to the Shadow Realm. It is literally just a reskin of the forest we are in, except it's called the Shadow Realm, so I'm expecting Yugi or Yami to show up sometime soon. And as soon as I write that Yu-Gi-Oh joke down in my script, this guy shows up actually called Malik gotta be a reference, but this Marek has a damn sexy beard. God, look at that stubble. Marek warns us not to trust anyone and then him and his sexy chiseled face run off into the distance. We now need to activate the pillars because... Look, this is what annoys me. I have no idea why I need to activate the pillars. I just do. Playing this game is like playing a game of Dungeons and Dragons with a seven-year-old as the dungeon master. You as a player ask, what am I meant to do? And they go, God, you need to activate the pillars, obviously. And you're left thinking, sorry, I know it was obvious to you as it's your story, but you didn't bother to tell me that at all. Here's a good feature. An anvil here makes unique 
area-specific weapons, so you need to bring the crafting stuff to this place and then make your unique item. I like this because it gives a reason for you to travel to faraway places or return to places. Anyway, we fix the pillars, fix the large crystal in the Shadow Realm, and doing all this unlocks the second rune on the main town portal, putting us one step closer to the legendary weapon to defeat Vayne. Did you forget we were doing that? Because I did. I open the travel menu and it asks me to travel to the ravine, so I click yes. Then it opens the travel menu and asks if I want to go to the ravine, so I click yes. So it opens the travel menu and then we get stuck in an infinite loop of not going anywhere. So I mess around with some stuff and it turns out it's the opposite to earlier. This time you can only go to the right map to carry on your quest through your personal travel menu, not through the portal travel menu, making transportation really inconsistent. Save Warlick, another series staple character, from a bear and learn about travel forms. So in Adventure Quest 3D, you don't get a mount, you become a mount. You basically turn into an animal and get to run everywhere faster. This feature isn't in any other Arctic's game, and I think I have a feeling of knowing why it's here. With a big 3D world, you need some way to move fast, so normally you'd use a mount, but adding mounts to a game means you need a lot more animation. You need to animate every possible combination of armor or weapons in a specific riding pose. And you know what's quicker than that? just animating a mount and having the player become that, therefore not having to worry about riding poses. The travel form isn't a bad idea, I just think it's been done to save animation time. The form you're given in the quest is temporary, and while I do have some potions that turn me into a horse, you can only buy permanent travel forms in the cash shop, because of course that's how it works. Watch this gameplay section now. See how little faith the game has in the player, or the average age of the player they are aiming for. I get multiple rewards by running through these little beams of light on a linear path. There is literally no way a player could get this wrong, and yet there's multiple rewards just placed right next to each other. Like, come on, you've got there? Well done, it's primary school participation levels of reward. It's hooray, you ran forward. Well done. Now the game bugs out on me. There is a cutscene that activates when I walk over this part of the land and it shows a wagon being attacked by plants. So I try and help out. But while fighting the plant, I walk over the cutscene line and it triggers again, even though I'm already on it. Then I realize killing the plants isn't actually doing anything. I need to inspect the wagon. So I click on the person, then the cart, still nothing. Then I click the quest icon to the top right accept the quest that's already been triggered, then trigger the cutscene again, that's a third time, and now it starts tracking it. Small touches like this show a real lack of polish. I know your early access, but you've had five years. After killing the dangerous plant, a giant present slides past me. Right, I'm going to assume that's a travel form. This is what I'm talking about when I say the game is an excellent short storyteller and a bad long-term game. They are willing to sell stupid cosmetics because it's funny or silly and it'll sell without thinking how many of those funny, silly, stupid cosmetics will prevent the game from being taken seriously as a main MMO. This isn't just Adventure Quest 3D that does this, this is why I hate every single main MMO that sells stupid, silly cosmetics. It just cheapens the world. You ever been to a party and there's a guy telling a load of jokes, and they're good jokes, but they don't connect together in any way and he can't actually tell a good, solid story? Or seen a stand-up comedian who just does one-liners and there's no actual narrative line throughout? Or you've watched some decent sketch comedy, you know, how it's enjoyable in short bursts, but there isn't really enough material in any individual sketch to flesh out a 100-hour show. This is how the game feels. It's funny in small doses, and it doesn't have the legs of a long-term MMO. I head back to the main town. There is a robot NPC standing here advertising Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales, despite the fact it's the 15th of January while I'm recording this. And while I'm previewing stuff, I notice another design issue. You can click every item and then click preview to make the preview window open. 
but you can only have one preview window open at a time, even though you've got this huge empty space on the left of the screen. Just put the preview window there permanently and let me click down the list. Maybe you can't do this on mobile, but come on, you launched on Steam. Optimize your design space while in a shop for the PC players if you're going to have a PC client. This robot dude has a quest, so I accept it, and it tells me to go to a place, but it doesn't teleport me there, and the place he's mentioned isn't in my map list, and I'm not wandering aimlessly around trying to find it, so instead, let's do one of those random adventures again. It puts me back in the same ice dungeon from earlier, which I can't be bothered to do again. I travel back to Death's Lair, and I wander around. I feel very... non-permanent, very formless. I don't feel like I have any roots in this game or any reason to be anywhere. I know there's a main plot, helping Death get his key back by killing Vane, but I don't know why my character is motivated to do this. The motivation for anything to do anything is just lacking. I do more random dungeons and this one sticks me in Yulgar's Inn and has me killing drunk people. I die, which makes this static PNG of death just slide onto the screen, which makes me sad because the 2D picture of death is lovely, and it just reminds me how Artix's 2D games look fantastic and their 3D game looks forgettable. I have to mention the music too, because while it's pleasant enough to listen to, or at least it's non-offensive, it's so generic it doesn't reflect or represent the events happening in the game at all. All. This battle music playing while we're in the tavern, you could put this in a forest or a mountain or a cave or an army camp. It's literally just battle music number four. It doesn't increase when attacked or decrease when enemies are beaten. It doesn't add anything dynamic. It doesn't suddenly change when the fight changes. It's just there because they thought, oh, games need music. I mean, it keeps playing at the same volume and intensity and speed even when I've killed everyone in this inn. Normally in a game, when the enemies die, the music stops. It's an audio cue the gameplay has changed, but... Here, no, it just carries on. And this leave area icon is so odd. It's just a player facing sprite by a window, despite the entrance door being literally just over there. Who is this for? Players who can't be bothered to walk across the room. I complete the dungeon, I think, and then back in town is just no ending screen, no reward, just another message in the chat box, dungeon complete. I'm sorry, but these random adventures are rubbish because your greatest strength, your writing, is not in them. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, designers, but no one is playing Adventure Quest 3D for the stellar gameplay. They are here for the witty story and the interesting one-off characters and zany adventures. So for you to have an adventure that's all gameplay and no story is literally the weakest thing you could put in your game. Back to the main quest, drink one of my many potions of pony travel for the horse form, and this again is rubbish. There's no horse hoof sound effects on movement, no ambient neighing. They are lacking so much in the small things that draw players into the world. I go back to questing for a while, and these quests are so uninspired. When this writing team puts effort into things, they make some stunning short stories, but when they give up, god damn do they give up hard. Seriously, these are my next quests. Kill five wolves. Collect seven berries. Kill five plants. Put five razor shells to sleep by clicking on five sparkly areas. Walk into four pillars of light. Defeat a mini-boss with no mechanics. Follow the quest arrow because there's no mini-map. I do also realise something about myself at this point. I keep pressing M expecting a map so I can navigate. I press M without even thinking about it. It's like an MMO tick. So maybe I need to work on this. Back to the game. Follow the light. Kill five hollow army soldiers. Oh, but now something interrupts my boredom, but it's not a good thing. I was thinking for a long time, why is this even in 3D? They have not used the third dimension in any unique way. Then, finally, we get to jump up these boxes, which is indeed using 3D, but oh no. The box model is just floating in the air. This, this is an oversight. This is bad. The actual hitboxes of the 3D objects in this game are fairly good, but not placing your objects flat on the floor or just using a generic stack of boxes object and not specifically navigating it or rotating it for this hill that it's on? This is just lazy. Did you not expect any player to ever look at this and say, that looks wrong? 
Talk to this kid, set fire to seven camp tents. There's no sound effects to doing this, you just click seven things, then run all the way back to the middle of the wood. They have clearly gone out of their way to make this map so large and spread the objectives out so much to encourage you to buy a travel form. Have a chat to this giant tree, turns out this kid is destined to be the next forest mystic and must pass three trials to prove himself and we agree to help. First trial is go and get an apple. Now the quest, find the apple tree, has potential. Maybe we need to ask around, talk to the kid, follow a map. Nope, there's just a quest arrow pointing to it. Everything has a quest arrow. For a game called Adventure Quest 3D, there's very little adventuring or questing when there's no map to read or puzzles to solve, and the 3D isn't used that effectively. So far, all it's done is show us a box not connected to the floor. Fight the evil apple tree? One good feature, however, is when you're locked onto an enemy, moving left or right automatically circles strafes you around, keeping you the same distance from the enemy. This is a nice touch. Whoever added this, this was a good combat decision. Kill it, then run all the way back. Seriously, there is a lot of running in this bit, and I keep pressing M, hoping for a mini-map. The lack of one is really saddening. I want to know what the area looks like from above. Give the tree the apple, then run to the second trial. The kid has to choose which of several magical staffs he wants. Okay, I've seen Indiana Jones. I can guess how this trial will go. There will be several awesome looking staffs, but he'll ignore all of them and choose the plain and simple wooden stick to show his connection to nature. Arriving at the Heartwood Gates, and this intro cinematic reminds me of the Forest Temple in Ocarina of Time. That is the second Zelda reference in this video so far. This cutscene is really odd. It gets good and then just instantly ends. I didn't click anything or press anything. The kid just starts floating up magically and then just Back to talking. Watch, tell me this isn't jarring. Then some evil dude shows up, and one of the guardians who was with us sacrifices himself for us, and I'd care if I knew who he was, but before he dies, he summons a magical dragon to attack the evil dude. Maybe next time, summon a magical dragon the moment anyone evil appears. If you can do that, open with that every fight ever. Back to the tree. The writing in Arctic's games is pulp fantasy. It's 90s superhero stories. It's the old Dungeons and Dragons or Dragonlance novels combined with the sarcasm and wit of English humour. It's jovial, light-hearted, it's adventure, it's Saturday morning cartoon of the MMO world. Give the staff to the tree and we're back to the dull quests. Go and kill six wolves, then three bears, then go to some caves. Oh, this is our first main story dungeon. It's scaled to our level and party size, and we can do public dungeons or private dungeons, so I'm going to try and solo this in private mode. I fight some elementals and die, but respawning doesn't respawn the enemies, so even this is a case of throw yourself at the enemies again and again and again until you win. Might want to have someone take a look at the texture on this rock, it's looking a little stretched. Fighting this flower enemy in the water is interesting because I can't see the red marker on the floor for its powerful attacks, so I lead it out the water. If this was a design choice to teach players about moving enemies to advantageous terrain, then good use of the 3D design space. If it wasn't, just pretend that it was. Reach the final room, a mystical ghost appears and challenges this kid to pass a trial to become a mystic, but we can help. So I fight four different elementals while the kid prays. Each elemental might be a different colour, but all the fights play out basically the same. There's no real point in having four separate fights if they're all going to be super similar. The kid passes the trial and we run all the way back to camp. Fill in the soldiers on what's happened, then go and tell the tree. Now one thing I must praise the game for, this kid runs at the same speed as you, so the NPC escort mission is actually acceptable. It's super easy to keep up. We do get ambushed a few times along the way, and then a mini-boss appears at the end. 
But in this cutscene, Reed, that's the kid, just summons a load of vines from the ground and straight up buries this dude alive. For a kid's game, this is brutal. Being buried alive must be one of the worst ways to die, and it's the first thing this kid thinks of. He's going to be one unforgiving forest guardian. Tell the tree we passed the test, and then the quest line just kinda ends. Reed just stands there, the guards are still there, we just stood around. Again, anticlimactic. You know how in films, something epic happens and then the scene cuts away, but in real life, something epic happens, then there's the awkward moments afterwards where no one's quite sure what's happening now or what's meant to happen next. This game is made up of lots of those moments. I want to try that side story labyrinth thing with the naked cosplayer because it looks cool, so I head back there, but I'm too low level to start it, so I guess it's grinding time. Let's try the daily boss. Oh, the daily boss area is small, but the boss is way too tough for me alone, and some people join, but it's a constant trickle of players instead of a big sudden mass, and because of this, the boss is always able to pick us apart one by one. So let's continue the main quest, and I find a new area. This cave seems to be next. I need to kill four troll things. I mean, I'm not expecting any variation in quest design now, but the music in this area is quite strange. Just give it a listen. Yeah, I was being facetious, there's no music here. I grind for a bit and hit level 8, so I go back to the labyrinth, accept the quest and charge in, only to find the first enemy is way too tough for me, and despite being the required level with decent equipment, I don't stand a chance here. Okay, you know what, I'm done. The main story has never been a serious focus in any Artix game. The games have always been containers for fun and silly adventures, so when the main story here tries to be all epic and serious, it just doesn't sit right. The side stories are where Artix games truly shine. The one-shots, the side shoots, the kooky zany little distractions with odd characters and strange places, like a Sneevil box fort or a cosplayer who's lost his clothes. It's silly harmless fun, but unlike an offline RPG or a single-player online RPG where the story really is the focus, in an MMO the story takes back seat to the gameplay, the combat mechanics, the questing. And the combat mechanics and questing here just aren't good enough to carry a full game. I try and travel around using the travel map and it's being awkward again, not taking me to the correct Heartwood despite the fact it says I have a quest there. And when I head over to Darkovia and fight this vampire while he's being attacked by a werewolf, he then turns around and kills me super quick. This area could probably be a fun side adventure, but you need to grind the dull main quest to get here. So I explore the main town of Batalon for a bit more before I leave. I remember you used to be able to clip out of bounds quite easily, but they seem to have patched all that up. Managed to get onto this roof though. Then I see this. A boss in the main city called Herp the Derp. It's a magical rainbow unicorn with ragdoll physics and it will wreck you. This is Adventure Quest 3D summed up. It's silly, it's fun, it's lighthearted, it's the meme MMO, the kids cartoon MMO, the lunch break size MMO. But a lot of the charm Artix Games had being flash animated has been lost in translation to 3D. There's still a lot to look at and chuckle about. The writing is decent. The combat is floaty but passable, and the game is at least free. But it's still, at its core, a lunch break size MMO. And now it's in the 3D world, it's got to compete with the big boys, and it just isn't able to. So what the hell do I score this? I need to give it a score that shows how it's a decent enough attempt at a game, and it's definitely fun for a bit, but it relies very heavily on humour and zany antics of the writing more than anything substantial or in-depth in the gameplay. It's a meme. A cake made entirely of icing, a chipmunk remix of a song. It's funny exactly once and then you'll get tired of it and move on. I guess this giant rainbow unicorn actually sums it up quite nicely. It's funny and silly, it gets an immediate laugh, but it's not a serious MMO. So I award Adventure Quest 3D, Herp the Derp, out of 10. Moving from 2D to 3D shifts the focus from writing to gameplay, and unfortunately writing is the team's strength, not gameplay. It's fun for a bit, but it's nothing you've not seen before. It relies too heavily on the humour and can't follow through with the actual design. It was the king of 2D RPGs, 
and now it's just an average 3D adventure with above average writing. Cheers for watching. If you want more worst MMO ever videos, then drop a like or sub to the channel. A massive thank you to my Patreon supporters and Twitch subs who make all my videos possible. If you're enjoying the series and would like more, you can support the Patreon from only one pound a month. Comment down below with any game you think deserves the title of worst MMO, then check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and Discord, and as always, have a great day.